chat when you get it. I'm going to arrange it. Hopefully, we can get here as soon as possible. So, we'll wrap it up later, right? Yeah, me too. I'm excited. guys, we got our next project, 1977 Pontiac Can-Am. So, hopefully we can get this thing here. Like I said, sooner rather than later, it's a bad time in the season to be buying cars in Florida because it's, you know, we get early April to mid-April, all the people that go down there for the winter, all the snowbirds are coming back north. So there's lots of cars that need to be transported. Um, so we'll see if we can get this thing here. But yeah, it's exciting. We got the 66 GTO finished up, and it's just sitting here covered up waiting for car show season. We were kind of twiddling our thumbs, waiting to see what our next build would be, and this this car, was a Craigslist ad uh, down in Orlando, just kind of presented itself, and everything looks legit, so um, we took a shot on it, we'll, we'll see what it looks like when it gets here. So I've been shooting emails back and forth. He wanted uh, 2700 for the one that was disassembled uh, in the middle of a restoration. So got him down off that number a little bit and I uh, had it delivered today. So I'm getting ready to come down here and, and take a peek at it and, and see what uh, see what money bought for me. Uh, they're, they're nice looking cars. So let's see what we got. Well, we got the 1977 Pontiac Can-Am Project Cinderella. Got it moved into the shop yesterday. And um, I'm just down here right now on the Excel spreadsheet uh, trying to figure out a budget. I developed this spreadsheet to go through to, to be able to keep track of everything and, and, and it lets us know whether we're over or under. And so it's just kind of a good uh, visual representation of how the build is going. So we want to try to stay as close to 10 as we can. Uh, we do know that this is going to be a little bit different of a build because it's a rare car. They only made somewhere between 1100 and 1300 The numbers kind of fluctuate depending on who you ask. Uh, but with rarity comes you know, expensive parts when you can find them and also just those, those parts are just whole, uh, so hard to source. Um, so we're, we're going to have some time and some effort uh, trying to get these parts that we need. So uh, what we need to do now is uh, we need to get in there and, and tear the car apart, break it down and, and figure out what we're missing, make sure there's no surprises lingering for us uh, to stumble upon, and, and make sure this, this budget of 10 is going to be an obtainable goal for us. We'd like to have it done uh, by the beginning of July. We want to try to make it up to Dayton, Ohio for the Pontiac Oakland Club and the GTO AA uh, Covention. Uh, it's going to be a big year. They're expecting north of a thousand cars, so we just thought if we can get this thing done, get it up there and, and put it in the field with the other Can-Ams with a big brightly colored fluorescent for sale sign on it. We'd be able to, to make that quick sale and also have it go to somebody who's going to really appreciate it and take care of it. So that's the plan. Ten grand, beginning of July. So now it's time to roll our sleeves up. Let's go start tearing this car apart and make sure we can do it. Can-Am torn apart today and nothing good to report. You know, I've said it before and, and I'll say it again, a car is just like a woman. I mean, in the pictures, she can be the most beautiful thing. And then you get her back, you start stripping her down and garbage, junk, ugly.
previous owner told us that the trunk floor was solid. Now his idea of solid must be a whole lot different than my idea of solid, since there's holes in the trunk floor that I can shove two fists through. Now there was supposed to be a small hole in the passenger side front floor pan. And the small hole looks like the car gave birth to a calf. I mean, it is a huge hole. I mean, there's barely any floor pan left. I mean, that whole floor pan is going to have to be uh, replaced. And there's a hole in the driver's side floor pan. So we're talking about a half a floor. Uh, and there's holes in the back. Uh, the holes in the back are, are about, you know, nickel size. So we'll just be able to to cut some metal and, and, and fabricate some pieces and, and weld those in there. And the back will be fine. But all of a sudden, our quick flip is gone. To make things worse, What do you think, Pops? Save uh, it or junk it? <laughs> Looks like junk to me. We'll give it a shot. It's always good to have numbers matching. We're going to go ahead and take that motor, take it the rest of the way apart, and take it down to the machine shop just to make sure. Um, got a good feeling, though, we're not going to be able to use it, so we had to start working on plan B. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time, so we went and picked up a parts car. Guys, when you're selling a car, be freaking honest. Jesus, pisses me off. Well, on the next episode of My Dad's GTO, we get down and dirty, tearing apart this donor car. It's coming around again, but I can see everything so clearly right or wrong. It's coming around again. Yeah.